Hello and welcome everyone to the LCS Challengers League Summer Promotion, the final day of the summer promotion. Um, the final day of our spring season on top of that, Josh. So we're just gonna have one more broadcast then. We've got about a month and a half before we hit summer. But for the desk, my name is Eric desorts Beltran. Of course, joining me is my brother from another mother and he, now he has a beard. So I'm kind of more attached to him than I am Kangas. It oh, is uh, true, Joshua Joshi true. Howard. <laughs> Steve Kangas, in fact, did shave most of his facial hair recently, so he's just got a little bit of the stubble. So, you know, at least we're able to keep up. I appreciate the compliments yeah. from the master of the beard himself. You're looking absolutely stunning, Josh. And, uh, you know, save the compliments for a little bit later because we got some business to get to. Let's pull up the bracket to see how things have unfolded thus far. We already have one team promoted. That is gonna be CCG. They took uh, the series against Lit. Lit will now be uh, challenging Blue Otter to try and find that second promotion slot. And I don't think a lot of people expected us to be here in this spot. I think a lot of people were looking at CCG as one of the natural favorites to get through, but Mirage Alliance was a team that with the addition of Salika and Neo, yeah. a lot of people were expecting to find their way back into the Challengers League. But instead, Blue Otter has made the gauntlet run after getting knocked down from Winthrop early on, and then they got their revenge in their last matchup, and they are now one best of five away from finding themselves in the LCS Challengers League. And, and what a wild bracket that it's been. I mean, Blue Otter, that was a game mostly considered an upset to that regard because Mirage with the rebuild did look like a very, very competitive team. Of course, being able to uh, take down Winthrop is definitely uh, pretty good because this is the team that you fought with in the first qualifier. And it's a team that took you down to the lower bracket. So a lot of momentum on uh, Blue Otter's side at the given moment. And uh, with this bracket, I mean, that only leaves one more match or that last qualifier spot is going to be Lit versus Blue Otter. As uh, we pull up the schedule of the day, I mean, we don't really need to say too much about this <laughs> one. We really framed it as best as you could. Lit, these were sent to relegations. They're fighting for their tournament lives to get back in to the NACL and Blue Otter looking for the upset. There's definitely some players on both these teams that I think should be looked at by Challengers League teams going into summer or into 2025 who have kind of proven themselves that this is an opportunity for both these teams to just find their way in and not have to worry about that at all. As I kind of look at the two rosters here, the big thing that I'm going to be looking at is how are people playing today? Because I definitely feel as though there's a lot of strengths and weaknesses on both sides that can really be pressed. As we take a look at Lit Esports, the player that I have been the most impressed with on this roster that the course of the regular season continues to be Rock Boom. He hasn't necessarily had the strongest laning phases, but he absolutely goes nuts in later game team fights. When Rock Boom has those uh, windows of opportunity, Rock Boom uh, will capitalize on them and uh, go very, very aggressive on some of these team plays. Uh, of course, you have to pay attention to both Kizno and Dragoon because they've been in the spot so many times now. Uh, pretty much 100% for the uh, 2023 when it came to uh, promoting. Had to promote twice just to get into the NACL. And right now, uh, they're not looking to lose their spot, man. As we look at their challengers on the opposite side of the rift, and that is going to be Blue Otter. Uh, this is a team that has a lot of momentum on their side currently. I mean, they're running the lower bracket. They've had some uh, great standout moments, especially from players like Samikin, who is the newcomer of the split for uh, tier three, as well as Lynx and Rovex, who have been fighting out some of these high pressure bot lanes. Yeah. and. People who have been fans of Tier 2 for a long time will recognize Lawrence as well. Played for Cloud9 Academy back in the day, whereas Samikin, like you said, newcomer, is very bright. Another player who has had a little bit of trouble adjusting to the laning phases, but who absolutely takes off and fights later on in the game. Whereas, I feel like for me, Samikin is one of the bright spots, but the other one I really want to highlight is Lynx. I don't feel as though yeah. Lynx is a player who potentially should have been dropped from the Challengers League in the first place, and this is his opportunity to fight his way back. I, I think it's very much shown from the play that we've seen from Lynx, because a lot of teams, they've been putting a lot of pressure into the bottom lane, and Lynx and Rovex have been able to absorb it well, and they come out ahead in kills in a lot of these. I mean, for the most part, Lynx has played the second most games out of uh, all the other teams here, uh, Winthrop playing the most, and Lynx still has a 6.6 .6 KDA. So it shows you how well he's able to do in this promotion tournament, even being in the lower bracket. 
Yeah, and he's going up with a support who has had a lot of opportunities. Remember, Rovex used to play mid back in the day, but at this point, I think he's played almost every single role competitively, and coming into support, this is an opportunity. Now, one of the things that I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to in this series is the play between Music and Kizno. Both of these guys were rather hyped up going into 2023, uh, in early 2024 as well, where people were looking at them and saying they have opportunities to go towards the higher ends. And this is going to be a big opportunity for both of them to showcase. One of the things that we looked at with Lit Esports during the regular season was they were struggling quite a bit because their legs were kind of collapsing and it meant that Kizno never really had an opportunity to build up any of the leads that they were looking at before but I think this is his opportunity to potentially do just that because his lanes should not be falling apart in this game or in this series it's going to be a lot of pressure on Kizno to step up when he couldn't before I mean that's what we're going to be looking at because when I see Blue Otter I've noticed that their early games, when it comes to a lot of laning, that is where we see a lot of these weak points coming through. Um, if they can get stabilization for their early games, it can help them a lot when it comes to both tracking the enemy jungler when they go on aggressive routes. Lawrence has fallen victim multiple times over on the top side, despite having some standout performances. Uh, but the thing is, if you do get Blue Otter with an early lead, if Music is able to get on some of these more impactful ultimate teamfight fighters, then that's when we start to see the snowball come in around the mid game for Blue Otter, which is where they've uh, historically fought the best. Yeah, and as we jump into the first pick and ban of the day, it is worth noting that in contrast, Lit is a team that has not necessarily had a lot of that momentum that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Lit is a team that has had a lot of struggles. If you've listened to their interviews, they have been pretty vocal about the fact that, yeah, it uh, has not been the best time on this team. Morale hasn't been super yeah. high, and they don't have a lot of time to turn things around. So as we jump into this one, not a whole lot of surprise. Zoe has been one of the best characters picked up by Samikin. And who was it? I think it was, I want to say it was Diamond during the regular season who said that he really hates Zoe because he kind of wins jungle matchups by default because you have so much pressure in the mid lane. The thing is, uh, Zoe's not the only long range champion that Samikin can play. There's a lot of big pocket picks uh, that Samikin has. Uh, Lux has been one of the more standout ones that we've seen. Uh, that have clutched Blue Otter in very, very pivotal situations. But as we get through the draft, first phase of draft is going to go by the uh, Rumble taken away from Lawrence, who's been performing well on it in the tournament so far, as well as the Vi ban from Blue Otter. This is going to leave up to Thalia. And now Lit looking to lock that in. Interesting choice to be going into Blue Otter of all teams right off the bat. Samikin has a lot of champions that are going to be effectively able to outrange this Talia. And I actually really worry that this Talia first pick is going to leave Blue Otter with too many things available. But with the Lux Hover right now, you kind of have to think. Remember, because this is a fearless draft, you only get one game yeah. on each one of your characters. And if we were to use the Lux right away, that could potentially leave Samikin in a spot where he really wishes he had it into Azir later. And so with this coming in already, this is kind of Blue Otter saying, hey, we understand we're on the red side of the map. We are committed to trying to win this one off the bat and give us a situation where we are able to get more games later on in the series where we have more control over the pick and ban. My only worry right now is right. Uh, Lux has been the clutch champion for Samikin. You go look at the uh, qualifier playoffs number one. It was game five that uh, Samikin pulls it out and dominates and gets the win for Blue Otter. Uh, same thing happened to the Mirage game. You clutch it out in that game three. When we see it drafted early in Fearless is when it hasn't worked out the best for Blue Otter. So that's definitely going to be a worry here. And they want to uh, put some pressure onto that mid lane as the Sin Zhao gets locked in for lit esports, which means if uh, Samikin's in the wrong position, you don't have that much mobility. Kizno can go uh, on the aggressive side of things for lit. Yeah, and it is one of the better picks into the Lux, partly because, you know, if you get bound beyond the range of your Crescent Guard, you just throw that out, and suddenly Lux can't do any damage to you. And so, it's an interesting play and counterplay. Normally, you expect to see the Zinjo paired with something like a Karma, but can't do that this game. At this point, we know where everything is going, and Robux going on to his staple cow. It feels as though there's a lot more focus on individual counter picks in this matchup than what we are used to seeing in a lot of Tier 2, but has become really the norm during the promotion tournament. Uh, let's be honest, live or die by the engage has been kind of the uh, theme of Rovex so far in this tournament. Uh, when his team's ahead, man, his engages look great. 
They look tremendous. Blue Otter looks fantastic as a team. When Blue Otter's behind and Rovex is engaging, suddenly it looks like an int. But uh, the thing here that is working out is it's a pretty classic lane that we have in the bottom right now. It's Kai'Sa and Alistair. Uh, this can be very, very aggressive. And Lynx and Rovex, they play towards that style. So uh, right now they're banning away a lot of uh, what could pressure them back in the Jinx and Zeri as they take away from that bot lane of Rock, Boom, and Plux. Yeah. And looking at the rest of it, one of the big things that I'll be looking at is how this top lane ends up shaking out, right? We know that Dragoon likes playing a number of a bit more off-meta juggernauts, and as the Volibear comes through, this is playable by both Music and Lawrence. We have seen Lawrence play this in the past, and I feel like that perfectly sets up an opportunity for Dragoon to semi-blind one of these juggernauts and set himself up for success in that top side of the map, because... Well, yes, the Volibear will out jungle and out fight the Xin Zhao in the first couple of levels. He's really going to get yeah. outperformed later on in the game. I, I I wonder if this is part of the strategy coming out for uh, Blue Otter right now because they're letting out a lot of big picks go the way of late esports. I mean, the Xin Zhao, Talia, Varus, Nautilus. Uh, the thing is. With these getting locked in, this pretty much puts a must-win scenario onto Lady Sports because you got to utilize these champions. You're not going to get another chance to play them. Exactly. We've heard a lot of teams. I remember in particular FlyQuest and Maryville were teams that were saying, like, there are certain picks that you grab and you kind of have to win on them. They are basically the equivalent of playing white. You're playing to win. You don't necessarily have to play for a draw in a lot of situations. Whereas Blue Otter, if they win this game, I mean, the only real champion that they're really giving up is going to be this Lux. The rest of them are characters that you can kind of plug and play elsewhere in other compositions. Whereas it has a ton, ton of firepower already being leveraged right now and as it looks like the last pick could be coming through the Kled has been a classic counter pick into the Aatrox but instead going to be going over towards our neck and again this feels as though Blue Otter not giving up a whole lot they're saying yeah you know we would like to win this game obviously any wins that you can get are great but then it kind of makes me wonder is this Lux in game one the way that they want to go for because yeah. it puts a lot of pressure on Samikin right now and really prevents having this counter pick available later when messages does choose to play the Azir. Yeah, that's one of the things about Fearless Draft is as we get deeper and deeper into these games, more champions get taken off the board, and that's where we're going to start to see those clutch picks come uh, come in. So it feels weird seeing the Lux early. Of course, we are going to see more as this goes on. Rovex has the Pike that he can play. On the opposite side of the Rift, you do have Dragoon, who's very, very well known for that Darius play. Uh, one of the things that does work out for Blue Otter is the Alistair Lux is a combo they love to put together because what's the cow do? He holds people down for this final spark to go through. But if this early game doesn't go their way and they head into the mid game and they're pressured around these neutrals, I don't feel too good about Blue Otter. I do like what Lit have been able to draft in game one. Yeah, I, I do really feel as though Lit should be looking to press their advantage relatively early. They should have Pryo in at least two lanes. The mid lane and the bottom lane should be able to play for plenty of prior. That will give a lot of opportunity for Kizno to at least avoid some of what Music is trying to do early on in the game. And as we jump into this one, remember, Lit is trying to find their way back into this one, whereas Blue Otter is a team where we've had a couple of these players have opportunities to play in the tier two before, but Samikin in particular trying to find his first opportunity to play in tier two. And I do want to bring up that conversation one more time about momentum, right? Look at Lit's road to get here. They split a series with Winthrop. They took a game off CCG who were kind of just BMing with the draft and then got thrashed three in a row. Uh, you, you said it earlier, Josh. Lit is already a team that had a lot of internal struggles uh, in the regular season. Go look at their post-game interviews. Uh, they're not shy about talking about it, but it does beg the question of where their confidence is currently because when you look at Blue Otter, you know, they fell early, beat Mirage, sweet revenge on Winthrop, currently on a three-game win streak. I can only imagine their opponents are brimming with confidence. And one of the other things that's really nice is Blue Otter are playing as the underdogs, right? You don't yeah. have a lot of expectations on you. You weren't even necessarily expected to get this far in the first place. And that creates a great position for Blue Otter where you don't really need to feel all that nervous as Lawrence ends up taking all three Qs <laughs> on his way to lane. Uh, this is a matchup I'm interested in seeing how it unfolds. Uh, I would normally rank Dragoon uh, above Lawrence, but I do think Lawrence has been playing pretty well in this tournament so far. He even got a solo kill back in that round one game against Winthrop, against Denethor, who is a uh, top laner we hold in some pretty high regards. So Lawrence uh, trying to have his own little standout moments here in the promotion tournament. 
And I also think it's worth noting that part of the reason why this Lit Squad even got to uh, the Transfers League last year or at the end of 2023, was because Dragoon kind of went nuts. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sammy, can I thought you were supposed to have a bad lane. Oh, no. Landing everything in messages will pay. A little bit of a wobble. Not going to get caught out by the rocks and messages. I'm having a good day in this lane. Not yet. I mean, Sammy can is not necessarily having a great job actually getting all the CS, but it is Lux relatively early on in the game, and Message is consistently pushing Semikin underneath the turret, where it is very difficult for uh, the Lux to actually get a lot of these last hits. You don't have the attack speed, you don't have the raw AD to do things, you have to use spells, and then it makes it really hard to find the, you know, the proper situations where you can actually go for these last hits. But overall, we are seeing that there is prio for both uh, Lit's mid lane and the bottom lane. That means that Pluck's able to go in and get some vision so they have a good idea of music being on the top side of the map but we're not seeing anything happening from kizno just quite yet instead both junglers are very content to just go clear out their own side of the jungle and that means that bolivar will be faster to play towards the top side there's at least a little bit of information that uh, plucks went in and warded as he did walk over that uh bot lane ward music only coming in getting some uh, inside information of his own just roams around the top side jungle only problem there is there's no camps to really uh, secure here, so right now we're just going after scuttle grabs. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Not a whole lot of play going on early in this game. Instead, it is going to be both the teams just kind of looking together, and the junglers will just completely match each other. They will clear out all the camps, but there is more vision effectively coming up for the side of Blue Otter in the top half of the map, and crucially, Dragoon doesn't know that music has backed. And that does mean that his blade pushing out leaves him in a very potentially vulnerable position. So Lauren's doing a good job early on to assert some dominance. And that's part of why Kizno coming towards the top side where he will clear out some of his camps, but also needs to make sure that his top lane doesn't get frozen upon. So Kizno's actually headed straight up top, potentially for the lane gang to make sure that that situation isn't going to unfold that way for Dragoon. Yeah, just walk straight towards the lane. Uh, kind of waiting out the slice and dice right there. If it does go out, that puts Lawrence in a uh, bad spot where he has to bring his flash. So Lawrence will play it on the safe side of things, and the presence felt by Kizno. Yeah, and it doesn't cost Kizno a whole lot, right? He's going to lose a little bit of time doing his Gromp, but because he started with the blue buff, it means that the Gromp spawns a little bit later. It means that the wool spawn a little bit later. And yes, Kizno spotted out, but people, everybody should have known he was going to be yeah. here anyway, so it's not exactly a whole lot of extra information that's going to be going over as the jungles will continue clearing out all of their camps, and I do feel as though Blue Otter, because their lanes are not as powerful, are losing out on a bit of time, and now we're actually seeing people going for these early grubs, but you don't have Pryo to play with in the mid lane here, Music. Music's still going to show up and contest. Kizno just doing it in his stride to... Uh... Make sure that the grubs aren't going to be an issue a little bit later if Blue Otter are able to stack them. Zamikin does get called over. And Gizno, no contest over there. Headbutt Pulverize comes oh. out. Rock Boom's critically low. Ignite goes through, and Rock Boom will take away. That's what I've been talking about, Josh. This bot lane, so aggressive for Blue Otter. And that's a bit of a disaster coming out for Lit Esports. There was uh, not a lot of surprise coming through there. Robux did not even have to flash to make that play happen. Rock Boom just goes down. That means that Lynx and Robux starting off the lane with a 2v2 kill really sets up Blue Otter for success later on. And yeah, I don't really know what to say about this one. Rock Boom just gets too close and dies for it. Let's see. That... It was very, very questionable. Plux could even help out because the Pulverize caught him as well. Yeah, that was just a bad case of judgment right there. Yeah. Results in the death of Rock Boom. Blue Otter will take first blood. That's really tough coming through for the lit side of the game because remember, they're the ones really playing for the win. They are the ones playing as white in this game of chess and it does mean that they have the opportunity to dictate how the pace of the game will go, but it's already a bit of a lead coming through for Blue Otter on the other side because we haven't seen anything from Lit come through so far. Neither jungler has made any attempt to do anything on the rest of the board just quite yet. It does mean that Blue Otter, I feel as though the later this game goes, the easier it becomes for Blue Otter to actually make things happen. They have the Renekton and the Volibear to serve as a bridge to get them to the point of the game where Lux is going to kill any carry, and Lynx has so much damage, it doesn't really matter how the rest of the game actually goes from that point. See right there, Rock Boom is left by himself once again, so 
quickly. Rovex and Lynx, they're very happy to punish that. They're very happy to make sure that Rock Boom's Varus isn't gonna be a big factor in this game and in this lane. Now, Music coming down to the bot lane. Let's out plugs and Rock Boom. It's only for pressure to dissuade Lit from staying anywhere near this dragon side. Yeah, I also want to point out that these are mostly just mistakes on Rock Boom's positioning, right? Which is a little bit interesting to say because the positioning yeah. later on in the game is what he has been known for as Samikin and Messages Trade. Samikin, even the better of it in the early exchange in the bot lane, still more fighting coming through as Rovex does have a stun charge, not use it instead, opts to just bail out. Dragon has been pulled from music and Kizno in the area right now trying to be a little bit of a menace and steal this away. Lynx and Rovex playing on the defensive. Samikin walks up. Yeah, no real opportunity for Lit to come into the fight. They will deny a couple of minions here in the bottom lane, but so far, Blue Otter, they got two of the three grubs on the top side. They get the first dragon of the game. They get the first blood. Things are really starting to look up for the team who's trying to find their way into the league for the first time. And now, Lawrence, this could potentially be an all-in. Lawrence steps up to Dragoon. He has that Fury Bar channeled up. Use it on the Ruthless Predator. That means one more auto, so it's a burst of damage coming through, and Dragoon has to take the long way. He wants to get back into position. Aren't you, Lawrence? is going to concede a little bit of that pressure back. Look at that Fury Bar once again. Pops it on the Q. Gets a bit more bonus health. Yeah, good stuff coming out from Dragoon to kind of escape the potential all-in, but overall, across the map... I knew I was kind of expecting a slower early game from both sides of the map, but I didn't expect it to be this slow, right? The only real play that we've seen from either side has been that 2v2 kill on the bottom side, and now Kizno going towards the top side of the map, but I believe he got spotted on the pixel brush towards the top half, and that means that as he goes, oh, here's a dive. Ooh, but in the bottom lane, Rovex, he does have his ultimate, so he can take this all day! Music gets the kill with the slam jam, thank you, ma'am, and the ADC of Lit goes splat. Yeah. Plux trying to hold the wave further back, but now it's a second dive. There's nothing for Plux to really do here. Sure, he's level six. He doesn't even have his depth charge, so Lynx will cash in on that kill in this bot lane. It's getting dismantled, Josh. Yeah, it's a clean and classic play coming through, and Samikin, oh. no ultimate. <laughs> so this should be okay, but Lit haven't gotten anything done on the map whatsoever, and their bottom lane is falling apart, and that cannot be happening in this lane state. That cannot be happening with the Vars early on in the game. The dives coming through, there's so much vision control as well coming up for a blue auto on the bottom side. And as they go for this dive, like you called out with the unbreakable will from Rovex, there's not a whole lot of power that's going to be coming through. The turret's disabled, Rock Boom goes down almost instantly, and the Plux, I mean, he does a good job trying to save himself, but as soon as Lynx just starts wailing on you, it's just going to be a second dive. They come on through, Music, make sure he stuns the right target and not the turret, and that's going to be a lot of money going into the coffers of Blue Otter Fall in. It's going to be so hard to stop. This bot lane is on fire right now. Lynx and Rovex, as I said, when they are ahead, they look tremendous. Rovex is able to find great angles, but it's complemented so well by this Volibear because this is a nightmare to defend dives against. Yeah, on the 14.6, it is at one of the stronger points. It has gotten nerfed on 14.7, but it is still a very strong champion. You still have a lot of ultimate cooldown, and Rovex oh. just goes. We are not done. This is why that combo of the Alistair Kaisa, that Killer Instinct comes through, and Rock Boom is dead for the third time in 10 minutes. This one is looking pretty over already. The top lane, if Dragoon dies here, this game's over. Oh no, Dragoon trying to get away. He does have the World Ender proc but he needs to get damage in if he's gonna use that Omnivamp, and Lawrence wants to put his jaws into Dragoon. Will not find him, Dragoon has enough to get away. Ah, but still, even then, forced out of the lane, that's gonna be turret plates going over to Lawrence as well. The mid lane is going well for Samikin. It is just Blue Otter dismantling every single part of the map. Yes, Kizno got his CS lead, but he hasn't been in places where his team has needed him to actually close out a lot of plays. And even though Lawrence doesn't get the kill, he gets the same amount of money just taking turret plates. And as they set up, there is going to be an opportunity for them to go for everything. Sammy can buy himself a free back, and that means that everything will be A-OK -okay for the next dragon as well. Goodness gracious. 3k lead now coming out. Look at all that gold. Everyone on Blue Otter is doing so damn well at the moment. And especially Lynx and Rovix down in this bottom lane. I mean, Lynx, man, definitely should be an NACL. 
we had that reduction from 16 teams and unfortunately that means there's less room for players there back then what we had links on what was it aoe yep. he still looked like a good player back then but man in this promotion tournament he's a completely different beast yeah and a huge interesting experience lead coming out for samikin as well uh that just means that he's taking better backs at the right time and now he's not trying to make some play there's a shutdown on links but it's gonna be difficult to actually try and pick up because of how far up the wave is already pushed and with 20 seconds left until the dragon actually spawns lit is trying to make something anything happen before the actual dragon spawns but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to this is a big attempt if you can at least try and get the flash out from links the ghost out from links you could call it maybe successful but now kizno's just waiting and nothing is being grabbed and it's brutal look at how many camps he has up on the far side of the map and blue otter they're not even going to push up and said they're going wow. to go directly into the river Lit just completely outmaneuvered. Kizno not able to find his way in. And now Blue Otter, they have the tools to try and fight this one. The only advantage that we do see coming out from Lit is that Dragoon has teleport, but he's pushed in. And now they do know that Kizno's here. Gonna be bot lane and jungler versus bot lane and jungler. And Robex instantly steps up. He's happy to try and uh, oblige and engage. If uh, Lit want to take a fight, he will give it. Oh. Yeah. Lawrence continue to create pressure. Dragoon cannot teleport, and ooh, Samikin <laughs> must have altered messages recently. We'll be able to get a plate for that, but also another dragon. I thought this was going to be a close series, Desirax, and we are already looking at a position where I don't know how Lit's going to be able to find their way back in. This is a huge blow to morale. And Josh, once again, it's very big that we uh, emphasize the draft that Lit have. Dalia, Xin Zhao okay. in the mid lane will be able to get a, get a kill onto Samikin. So there's some life still le left in Lit, but they need to do more than that, especially with the draft they have. Yeah, I mean, it's a consolation prize at best. A flash coming out from Samikin is nice, but there's also the kill going onto Kizno. Now he's trying to find his way towards the top side, but uh, Buddy, he's spotted out by that pink ward as well. You oh. need more than that. Did he even know? Yeah, it's huh? already the sweeper. All right, well, now he's going to be starting this up, trying to use the tempo advantage of Samikin being dead, but it's going to be a 4v4 still. Oh, nice hook coming out from Flux. He is able to catch out music, and down a jungler will be Blue Otter. Kizno goes in, Seismic Shove pulls the cow right back. Wind becomes lightning, and cow becomes food for Lit Esports as they're able to pick up two back to back. All right, well, there we go. That's what we need to see coming out from Lit. These games can still be very explosive. And so seeing that Blue Otter gives up multiple kills that Samikin, Music, and Robex all fall in the short succession does kind of tell us a lot about what we have seen in the rest of the promotion tournament, where we have had a lot of colorful games, a lot of people getting picked all over the place. And this just shows that there's still a lot of, uh, still a lot left for these teams to try and develop. And Lit Esports, they will be getting some of that gold back, reducing gold lead a little bit, and picking up this Rift Herald will hopefully allow them to get some structure, but Samikin already got Ooh. the first brick all -in. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I, I don't have the, do you have the gold thing up? I want to see it right now, but actually, hold that, hold that. We got a fight coming in. As Lawrence is looking to take it. 3v1, the rest of Calvary is able to ride. Music and Rovex are here, but Lawrence is a little bit too low. Crescent Guard, as Music jumps in, wants to find Dracoon. Dracoon looking to bail. World Ender's going to time out. Rock Moon's oh. able to find one on the backside. Dracoon's still up. Music on the hunt. The bear will be able to rip and tear one apart. Now Flux runs low, and Lynx runs in. Who comes out, but Flux is able to, to find the Kai'Sa. Out comes the final spark from Samakin, and like that, Blue Water, they fight a very, very long engage to save Lawrence, and they will come out ahead. Yeah, ultimately, we are seeing Samakin the Sniper once again coming up to full fruition as he... Oh, I didn't even realize he was bot lane when this whole fight started, but he's still able to get yeah. a kill during this entire kerfuffle. But it looked really good overall for Blue Otter, Rovix, and Music just in on top of everything. But Rock Boom arrives first, and that's how they were able to get Lawrence. But after that, it just becomes a full-on scuffle. And I really like the way that Lynx plays this. He starts off jumping onto Flux, but as soon as he realizes that target is no longer viable, not only does he manage to flash away from the hook, but he creates so much pressure. And Samikin able to walk all the way from bot lane in order to find his ult. And 
even more. Rock Boom burns his flash at the tail end of that. So you just don't stop winning for Blue Otter off the tail end of that last engage. I mean, sure, the operation was save Private Lawrence. He died, it became a revenge mission. We gone John Wick, they killed our pet gator. As the recall does come in in time for Rock Boom, it's still a lot of pressure as 3.2K is currently the lead for Blue Otter. Is no hops onto music to chase him out of his jungle. Cool. I mean, I guess that creates a little bit of pressure, but nobody's coming top lane. This should be a top lane turret going over to Blue Otter, and it comes in at a good time. But it is going to be a seesaw on the map, right? You do have Lawrence able to trade off this structure for Dragoon, and the big play will come in about a minute when we have another dragon actually spawning. Blue Otter already have two to zero in that regard, and it will be a position where the bottom or the top lane will be in a fantastic position. Goodness gracious, Samakin. Couldn't really go for the chase. That's the thing with uh, Lux. You're really dependent on your cooldowns. And once you burn that entire combo, uh, you're very vulnerable. But that's kind of a warning shot and a preview of things to come for Samakin's Lux. Yeah, I really like the damage check coming through. It's like, oh, can I kill this guy? Maybe. It was actually remarkably close. But that just yeah. means that that damage goes on to messages. It goes on to Rock Boom, probably Plus as well. They all will just burst to all the damage that's coming out from Samakin. There is the Seraphs. For messages so he might live and then Plux does have the locket so there are some opportunities to try and save them but it doesn't take a lot of poke before that in order to get the party started so right now blue otter setting up around the dragon this would be their dragon soul point rovex attempts an engage only finds kizno so gonna back off as the weaver's wall comes through Plux gets caught by the light binding out comes the final spark Plux is low so is music oh. music will be the first one to fall messages able to grab the kill and Plux still able to bail out links on the back line trying to get away from dragoon who comes in with the darkened blade gets chased right on out but look at sam again he's on oh. the flank he finds two kills back to back able to flash back and now lit or in a terrible situation messages and rock boom the carries still alive they can bring damage but sammy can he wants to line oh. them up and knock them down a double kill found for links messages wants Wants to rock his world, and he will with the shutdown as Liddy Sports find a comeback. Oh my gosh, Rogex trying to steal this one away from messages. Get in there, buddy. <laughs> oh, he goes in. Rovex, the last stand. Hits him with the cowbell, but a hey, rock will win out, and messages. We'll be able to grab that Drake. What a chaotic fight, Josh. I gotta say, it did not start off particularly well for Blue Otter. Rovex just using all his cooldowns and dying. Music going in and dying before he even gets the bonus health from his ult does mean that they're effectively playing a down man fight. And Plux, even on this Nautilus, is still going to be able to ha use that hook to create a lot of pressure. Ends up dying to Samikin, but... Overall, this was a fight between Lynx and Messages, and just seeing their positioning throughout all of this does give us a lot of hope for both of these rosters, but at the end of it, it does end up being Messages who comes out on top because they are able to find some pressure onto both Lynx and Rovex, find the seismic shove, and then, crucially, Lip puts a stop to the dragon stacking as Rovex not able to steal it back. It was a desperation moment right there, clutched out by Lid Esports and clutched out by Messages. Uh, most importantly, 404 right now on this Talia. And again, this is a very big must win situation for Lit. You want to utilize this uh, incredible draft that you're able to grab. Blue Otter feel like they have the counter to something this potent. And to be able to shut them down around a lot of these neutral objective fights, a good look for Lit Esports. But still, 2K is the lead for Blue Otter. And the lead is. A lot of it is on Lynx right now. He is so much stronger as we see a side of the go wide. Lynx is significantly more powerful than Rock Boom, and crucially, that is going to be something that will continue to get stronger and stronger for Lynx over the course of the game. As we look for Rovex, hit the Baron. That works. Oh, oh. Next flash, no problem. All oh. right. We tried. We tried. Lady Sports. Catch yeah. themselves a cow around the Baron. All the meanwhile, Lawrence is still putting some pressure down into this bottom lane. It is going to beckon Dragoon towards the uh, bot. Yeah. I've, I've seen this before, right? You put the support in the dra in the Baron pit, though, and then you just aggro the Baron, and then they can't hex flash out, and they're just like, wait, <laughs> stop, help! But ends up getting out of this one this time, but Blue Otter putting a lot of pressure towards the top side of the map. The ultimate from Samakin will be up in 30 seconds, so it is okay to use that on every wave, effectively. Oh. 
Okay. Something. Just quietly gonna pass each other in the night. Oh. oh, they know he's in this brush though, so they're still gonna hex flash over and try and catch messages. You can see the hex flash channeled goes in the opposite direction. Ah, Rove XCTs me. Mm -hmm. Still gonna be able to take away the blue buff here as a lit losing control of their own side of the jungle a little bit. One of the things that we are seeing is Kiko scales his own blue buff back. Well done. Is the wave states have been a little bit confused for both of these rosters, right? We are looking for we're seeing the seesaw happen pretty consistently when one team overdicks on one side the other team is able to push out the far side but this time around it does just create a situation where the mid lane is a bit of a lost art between these two teams and we will see how they are able to play around it what did he use it oh he did that's what you were pointing out <laughs> telling us the uh na ram is a lost art josh well okay playing <laughs> in a ram properly is a lost art all right, fair enough, fair enough. Game still in a rather neutral state. 2.4K is not going to mean that much as we get deeper and deeper into this. So Blue Otter haven't been able to really blow up this lead. And oh, a lot hello. of credit over to Lit, who are still looking for fights. Music hops in. He wants to find messages. Final Spark doesn't get the money. Now Message is able to bail out, but Lynx goes through with the Killer Instinct. The shutdown's found thanks to the Ignite. Dragoon still there. Plug's able to land a hook. We'll find it on the Lynx. Dragoon puts his attention on the Lynx, but Lynx will put some space and will put some distance. And Blue Otter will put some pain onto Lit as it's a double kill for Lawrence's Renekton. Oh my gosh, all over the place. That fight just kind of started out of nowhere. They thought they had a pick onto Music, but instead it was a full on brawl. As now Blue Otter going to be the one starting up the Baron. It is important to note that there is a smite for kids up he wants to try and steal it but oh, man. not gonna be able to come on over instead it will be blue otter instead picking up the baron music is even alive to grab it and they will be back on the map ready in time to fight for the next dragon blue otter 5.5k in the lead even with lit dictating this play they thought they caught out music it was actually blue otter who win the team fight yeah it's very, again, very confused. Lynx goes in very aggressively, allows the Ignite to pick up the first kill, and then kind of shifts to a front to back after that. And because Dragoon and Lawrence are fighting off on one side, Kizno doesn't have any damage left to back him up. It does mean that the team with the 80 carry is going to be winning this one. Rock Boom goes down too early, and Lynx cleans up. Now, Lynx is really him, man. A lot of these fights, I mean, the Killer Instinct wherewithal to understand that hey i don't need to chase down this kill ignite's gonna clean it up i gotta bail out and stay in good uh, positioning have good spacing now blue otter around the dragon this has been a tactic some teams have used is to pressure blue otter before they get their setup around the drake so the weaver's wall goes out but unfortunately they're gonna be empty-handed for lit esports also the death the charge. Table that's two ultimates used and now it's on rock boom to be the engaged tool Rovix coming from a different angle. Here comes Lynx once again right into the back line. He wants to chase down Rock Boom. And with Lit getting absolutely disintegrated, snapped away by Blue Otter, it's three for absolutely nothing. And Lit, they're trying to be too fancy with the way they're playing around this dragon. They don't have the tools for it. And now Pluck's going to get caught. Uh -oh. Here comes Lawrence. The Gator's there, but the anchor pulls Pluck's to safety. That's Infernal Drake. Going over to Blue Otter. And the Rally Cry Baron buff is still going on as well. And that does mean that Blue Otter will get this bottom lane turret, get a bunch of gold for themselves. The mid lane will continue to open up at the same time. And this gold lead absolutely ballooning across the map as Blue Otter nearly 9,000 gold in the lead from this position. Almost everybody is up an item on their, or will be up an item on their opponents after they all get back and spend. And it does mean that lit esports their opportunities to try and make things happen are rapidly disappearing and like i said i think they're just trying to get too fancy with their plays and for blue otter they don't need to be fancy with their plays they just need to engage they need to go right into your face and that's what we're seeing from rovex that's what we're seeing from lawrence that's what we're seeing from music and even lynx who in that last fight used the killer instinct so early to pressure rock boom uh this team really works well uh -oh. together when they do find the 5v5s as a unit right now it's going to be lit we're looking to uh dismantle this group lawrence is still alive he tries to escape he will go down it's gonna be a two for one thus far as blue otter will pick up some stragglers 
now messages rock boom they're kind of familiar with this they're the only ones alive the carries they're able to clutch it around dragon last time but now blue otter are happy to take a bigger fight they have all five available they chase away lady sports and the mid lane is still going to be the target of attack here for a blue otter they should be able to open up the base for the first time of lady sports 27 minutes into the game and yeah, these fights are just kind of coming out of nowhere. I respect it from Lit trying to make something happen, but unfortunately, they're trying to be really fancy with everything that they're actually going for, and it does mean that... Oh! 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 My God, Zavikin! One hit KO and Rockboom is gone! That's brutal. I'm a little bit surprised that Blue Otter don't stick around to take down the inhibitor at the same time, but they have so much power on the map, and the problem is that's going to become easier and easier to do for Sammy Kin. Is now Robex? Does he go in? Oh, yeah, he does. Turns it right on to Kizno. Kizno, not even getting caught by the light binding, but the autos of links will do the work. Flux will follow his AD carry to the gray screen, and it's the victory march for Blue Otter. We'll see. I don't think they actually are going to be trying to end it here, right? They're using the top lane wave in order to push in. And Robux, of course, uses all five messages. That is going to be two inhibitors that should be falling here for Lady Sports. I'm just looking at that Lux ult cooldown. Oh, yeah, it's so short. So fast. It's like a, a wave. It's like every wave yeah. you get to use it. And what's wild is, in these team fights, you can see it used two to three times, depending on how much they extend. It's happened in the past with Samikin's Lux before. Top lane inhibitor now exposed, gets taken down. Lawrence playing on the side, wants to grab the mid lane inhibitor. Dragoon will defend, take about half the health of the Gator. The Blue Otter have gotten what they came for. They've cracked the base of Lid Esports. They're up 14,000 gold at 28 minutes. They have three dragons to one. The objective bounties have been up for a while, but Lid Esports, they don't have the tools to make anything happen. We got to go back to what we were talking about before the game actually started. This was a must-win game for Lid Esports. They had the Zinjiao. They had the Nautilus. They had the Varus. They have the Talia. These are a lot of power picks that you are expecting to come in for the rest of the series that they will not have access to anymore, whereas Blue Otter... The Lux is a cool pick that, you know, maybe you can prey upon the fact that it will not be available later on. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of... These are must-pick champions coming out for Blue Otter. This is a huge shift in the momentum for the series. And it feels as though Blue Otter are very rapidly becoming a favorite. As Blue Otter currently set up around the jungle of Lady Sports... Feel momentum on their side once again as the uh, knockout is oh, going to be found on Flux. Here comes Link's Killer Instinct wants to find the back line. Rock Moon's returning fire though. Death Charge is able to find one and Kizno will grab the kill onto the carry. But Lawrence has taken down messages. Sammy Ken still alive, still looking for the angle. Dragoon's going to deny it. Scrapping oh. this out is Lady Esports and they're able to grab another. But watch out for Sammy Ken's final spark as it'll claim Dragoon. Kizno looks to run away. Flux doesn't have an angle out and he gets chased by by the cow! Blue Otter get an ace! Wow, that should be the end of the game as well. Even though Lynx goes so aggressive in that last fight, the rest of his team is still able to stand strong and they are barging on the doors here of Lynn Esports in game one. And Samikin, once again, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I swear to God, if this is another Romer incident. No, no, no. Okay, okay. We got five seconds. They can destroy it fast enough. There are no issues here, Josh. Game number one. Oh! Exclamation point from Samakin. Belongs to Blue Otter. Wow, 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 wow. Blue Otter just looked dominant from the beginning to the end of that game. And hey, Eric, that means that you might be able to get back to your WrestleMania sooner than you expected. But we'll take another look at this last fight once again because it was a pretty dominant showing coming through. And this is one of those spots where I think you were the one who wanted to say it, that Robex was kind of like the support version of Winnie. He'll just take <laughs> any fight. Right, and this is one of my favorite communications to have in a game of League of Legends. It's like, hey, every fight is winning. Literally just get them to start fighting us, and we will win. It looks a bit tough for a moment, but then Samikin, you know, his 20-second ultimate comes back up. They're able to take down Rock Boom, and then Samikin able to just throw this down in a perfect corridor where he's going to threaten to hit everybody. And Plux just able to flash out of that one, but who cares? He still ends up going down in the end. I'm going to be honest with you, Josh. If these teams faced off in round two in the upper bracket, 
I think Lit just takes it. But the fact that Blue Otter has had so much time to get their momentum going, they are looking like the favorites in this best of five. And off that note, we're going to throw it over short break as we get ready for game number two of Lit Esports versus Blue Otter. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. Hello, my name is Samrath Lung. I go by Sammy Ken on League of Legends. I was born in Cambodia, but I moved to the United States, to Pennsylvania, around 2008, so when I was about four or five years old. We mainly played video games such as Wii Sports, and then we eventually got a laptop for my whole family to use. Since we like live next to our cousins, we visited them often, and then we saw them playing League of Legends, so my brother got into League of Legends, and then I saw him playing, and then I got into League of Legends. I started in late season three, so I was about 10 years old, like 9 to 10 years old. I was like a silver four player for like two years. In ninth grade, I hit Grandmasters for the first time. It was like about 450-ish LP. And then during the same summer, I took a University of Pennsylvania summer program for mechanical engineering. And one of the TAs there was a college student in like his junior year. And he also played League of Legends. I asked him if we could like play together sometime. And then like the next day when I saw him after we had each other, he was like, I thought you'd just be like some kind of gold player like me and then I like look over my friends list and I see that you're Grandmasters. I was like, oh, is that a high rank for like people my age? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh. I am known as the Zoe one trick in high elo, being able to hit rank one on a champion that most people didn't really play or believe to be really weak. So I'm like really happy that I was able to consistently stay in within the top 10 of NA for basically like three, four months, even like the middle of the season to the end of the season. I would say what really got me going into the competitiveness of League of Legends was definitely once I realized that I could get scholarships for just being good at the game and then finding a college that would be able to sponsor me. But in the end, I ended up choosing to not go the collegiate route. I was told by like my brother who had like a lot more experience in the esports scene that it's better to just go to a college that's good for you, that has like a good reputation and work on amateur stuff on the side. So I ended up going to Boston University. They didn't really give me any scholarships for being like an esports player. After from persuading from my friend Windoges, who also happens to be in the same year as me, he and convinced me to get onto the League of Legends team because I was like very apprehensive at first. I made like a lot of great friends here at Boston University. It made me realize that the main reason why I chose to go to an out of state college was so kind of have a lot more freedom from my busy family life and meet like a whole bunch of new people outside of like my usual sphere of friends by taking this leap. I knew and I'd hoped that I'd be good enough to be able to get into a new world of amateur and LCS. After going 2-3 in the spring open qualifiers, I had to take a break. I couldn't play in the summer open qualifiers because I was vacationing in Cambodia with my family at the time. I came back, grinded it all, hell out of solo queue, started college, got back challenger, and then I got invited by Karen Moser from EG as a part of the EG X HPE combine. And I was really surprised because there was like this rule about 40% of a person's champion pool cannot be on one champion. And I asked her about it uh, after the combine and she was like, oh yeah, you were like just under 40% when we made the snapshot of inviting players. That is really lucky. If I had over 40%, I probably wouldn't have been able to been invited to that combine and I probably wouldn't have been like exposed to the world basically. Going into the combine, I knew that I was one of the better like laners and i know that i could transition that into leads so i felt like i was definitely around the same level as everyone else and maybe even like a little bit better in certain aspects such as like laning and mechanics and micro so i felt like i really belonged there there was no imposter syndrome this time rovex was the one that actually reached out to me i was talking with some other teams about potentially being on their roster but then i saw their roster with Lynx and music and lawrence and they were only missing a mid laner most of the like the really good mid, -laner, mid laners already had like nacl offers and oq offers from like really established teams or like orgs. I was basically one of the last few mid laners. I guess that was the main reason why they picked me. So like, I'm grateful for it, but I'm glad to have been given this chance. My goal is to definitely become an LCS player. My goal for this split is to definitely 
make it to at least a promotional tournament and defeat an NACL team. I've already declared myself one rival, one Mr. Toasty Alex. We basically started at the exact same time. He is basically the opposite of what I am. Even though we have both very good lane phases, he is, in my opinion, he has a lot better macro and engages in team fights as well as flanks, which is something that I still lack. He will be the one person that I will be looking forward to playing against and defeating eventually. On Twitter, I don't really use Twitter that much. At Semikin, PW at Semikin Lol on Twitch as well, and on YouTube, it's just Semikin, I believe.